Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I hope that also as the seasons change and as you look at all the beauty of the cherry blossoms. Because <laughs> most of you guys are very romantic, but um, me and my wife, we used to be romantic. When seasons change, we get sick. <laughs> and then we tend to look at flowers, but flowers, they all fade. My wife actually doesn't want flowers, she wants money. <laughs> so, because you know, usually, unless it's a live flower, it won't last, right? So, uh, remember your feelings. Oh, I'm feeling bad. Oh, I'm sick. Or, oh, I don't find this believable. That's you, right? Truth doesn't change. By the way, facts change, which is kind of weird, right? Facts and truth, isn't this kind of the same? Nope, it's different. That means even you change. Uh, what I used to write, I will never write again. What I used to say, sometimes I do say it still again. Um, one of you actually said this, Pastor Dave is so mean, because I, I kind of was very blunt, you know? But, yeah, that doesn't change easily, but I have to, or else, you know, I'll become a very mean pastor still. So, we will constantly be changing. You won't stay young. You won't stay, you know, like one of you comes from India. When I first met that person, he looked old, but now he looks young. Why? Because he just shaved his beard, right? But in some countries, even young people grow a beard and they look really old. But when you ask their age, they're super young, right? And of course, in some countries, the women hide behind veils and so forth, you only see the eyes. And you know, but it's a, it's a very unusual world we live in. And it's changing. It's being so rapidly uh, advanced, but yet it's getting worse, right? By the way, do you know, um, th I'm not political, but this is tied to all of us, disasters and wars. Do you know why Trump attacked the Air Force base in Syria? Because Syria didn't keep a promise. We're not going to use chemical weapons on our own people. And so Trump just did what's supposed to be rightful. You lied. That's it. I'm going to bomb where your airplanes are and where your chemical war is. So he, and plus, he gave the warning, Russia, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then in Syria, maybe not that much warning, but he warned them already, oh, I'm going to do it. But then we may think that Trump is a really bad guy, but Trump is actually trying to keep the peace too, if you think about it. So I don't know if you ever play poker, right? You shouldn't always say, I challenge you, you're faking. Sometimes the people that have power, God allows them to have power. Why? We need peace on earth. Why? So that a true peace on earth can be relayed. Do you know how hard it is to evangelize when there's war and disasters? It's really hard. That means all of you are going to college, you don't need to go to college anymore when there's war. Right? Oh, you're working in social welfare? You don't need to work in social welfare. You don't need to do hog ones. You don't need any kind of degree when there's war. Right? Um, Pastor Sam right now is in Africa for two weeks, and after that, Philippines. But do you know why he goes to Africa and Philippines? Because he likes lion meat and <laughs> elephants? No. Because God opened the door to Nigeria, right? We met the, one of the greatest athletes in Nigeria was part of our team here, right? And that's why God opened more doors. And all three great athletes from Nigeria were in our church. And they still are connected to us. And that's why Pastor Sam went to Nigeria. And as he went to Nigeria, these people love the gospel. Right? And certain people will respond better. And they want him also to go to Ethiopia. So he's going for two weeks. One week in Nigeria, one week for Ethiopia. And the next next following couple of more days, he come back to Korea, but then as soon as he comes back, he goes for two weeks to the Philippines. But why travel so much? Why leave Pastor Dave alone suffering? <laughs> Leading worship and doing all the rest of the ministry. It's easy. Why? Everybody has to be called by God and has to play their correct roles. Right? Pastor Sam is very good at traveling. If I travel, I'll be down for a long time. I'm like, oh, I didn't sleep well in the airplane. Oh, the food was good, but it didn't match me. I'll just get sick. But Pastor Sam, he loves eating. He has already 
build up all the bacteria in his stomach to you know, take care of all the different foods in the world. Certain people are that way. If Pastor Brett was sent out, he is almost like me, but a little bit better. He'll also get sick and he'll complain, oh, I don't know why I went there. I got sick, I got sick in Korea and Thailand. He always does that to me. But he's younger, so his immune system is better. But I've traveled enough to know this. It's not easy traveling. It's not easy being here in Korea as a foreigner. You should all know that. Then, what's the answer? The answer is not, how are you? The question also is not, how are you? I'm doing well, I'm fine. Although I do ask that question. My wife is amazing. You know why? She's the only one, and some other people too, but my wife can scold me. You know why? Because I raised my boys, and my wife says, don't say that to, my, you know, to our children, right? Because I said this to my son. My son is really getting lazy, the first one, and he doesn't know the concept of time. We're gonna be late, you're gonna be late for school, Hurry up, and then he's still reading a book or playing. Come on, you gotta brush your teeth, right? And look at the time, and he looks at the time, and he acknowledges it, okay. But then he doesn't understand it. And then I said this, and my wife scolded me because I said this. You know that in life, you gotta keep your promise according to the times that you have. You can't be late, you have to be early. Because I was taught that way, and I was punished that way. Then my wife says this, don't teach him that. Don't teach him the things of the world, right? I was like, why? But then she's totally right because it's not the gospel. Okay. Well, then she said this. Okay, let's go. And then she gets ready. And then don't we get mad and we fight with our kids and each other sometimes. But we don't sleep with the fights anymore. You know why? Because we listen to the message and then ah, we realize we're not gospel centered. Oh, and our kids, it's not about keeping the worldly way. Sure, you need to have an elite, reasonable attitude. Sure, you need to be early. Sure, you need to have leisure. But you know what that leisure is? Have a spiritual leisure. With what power, with what motive are you doing all things? Then the real question is, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm getting all A's. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Or, you know, man, I received answers from God. Oh, I prayed this way and God healed me. That's not the question you should ask, number one. The number one question is this. Who are you? And if you know who you are, no problem. I'm Indian, Filipina, I'm from, you know, Kenya, Tanzania, whatever country you're from, Canada, Norway, no matter where you're from, Germany, doesn't matter, America, the greatest country in the world, that's not who you are. That's just a land that we flew from. We grew up there, but that's not who you are. Oh, I was born in McDonald's. Are you a hamburger? <laughs> no, you're not, <laughs> right? Some of you think you are, but you're not. <laughs> like, Jaren, I would like to be born in a steakhouse. <laughs> then you'll be a steak, not eat steaks, right? So who are you? Well, you know, I work in the military. I'm a soldier. That's not who you are. That might be your job, but your job is not who you are. Remember, Paul said it correctly. It's by God's grace, I am what I am. And what I am actually is a substance too. But actually, it's who I am too, right? Who are you? By God's grace, I know who I am. I know my identity. Who are you? Oh, I'm a woman. And some of you are very mean to me. You know why? Because I always say this. She's not here, but she hates it when I say this. Uh, she's sick right now, and so one of our taller, you know, members, and she doesn't come very often, but she always complains that, you know, Pastor Dave, you're so mean to girls. And I, because I always say this, because I, I have to meet her by herself, because I'm trying to save her area and her company too. So I'm like, you know, you know, I don't like meeting girls by myself, because why? I always have to meet in like coffee shops, and it's so loud, and, you know, I feel so uncomfortable, and all the people talk, and then one of you that I met, and you're a girl too. And then we went to a restaurant, we were eating together while I was helping you. The lady, the, the waitress person, she goes to the girl, right? Is that your boyfriend? Because she only saw the back of me. It's like, and, like, and she goes, that's a compliment for you, <laughs> right? It's like, that's not a compliment for me. Do I look that young, <laughs> right? But I didn't, I just wore my t-shirt 
you know, just comfortably and just had a jacket that's decent look, looking, right? I didn't look like a pastor, but then as soon as the waitress saw my face, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is he your dad? <laughs> right? But she, she already know the waitress knows the dad already. So I was like, oh, I have to live so uncomfortably with so many of these girls. <laughs> Why? Because the girl leaders are not rising. <laughs> but it's fine with me. Why? Because I don't have any daughters. I only have sons. So sometimes, most of you, I treat you like my little sisters or daughters. But I always am very mean to the girls. You know why? So that everybody will know around me. You can, you can actually hear the conversation. And I'm just straightforward. I'm like, you know, you know I kind of want to just hit people. It's like, it's like, you know, right? Come to your senses. Not an abusive way, but because it's so, so weird how we have to live in this world, right? You have to be so careful. That's how the world is set up. I'm a girl, I'm a guy. It's, yes, that's very important, but that's not who you really are. If you really close your eyes and you think about all your thoughts, that's not who you are. It is, but it's not. Your thoughts is what made you who you are, but that's imprinted. So you love games, you love baseball, that's who you are. You love math business, you love Pokemon, that's who you are? You're Ash? You know, you're Pikachu? You don't know. Are you, who are you? You're a piano player? You only think about food. Are you food? Right? You're not. You only think about lifting. You're not that. But it does influence you, right? Then the question is this. Why can't we know who we are? Because we're dead. Who are you? You forfeited yourself, you're lost, but the real essence of who you are, you're dead. Fundamentally, you're dead. You cannot find who you are. There is no way you can find it. You try to study, make money, and find who you are, you cannot find who you are through that. You cannot find yourself in your husband, in your wife, in your children. You cannot. You cannot find yourself in your work. You cannot find your work in experiments. Little mouse, I'll take care of you. You're my favorite. You are my only friend. That's not who you are. You're not who you are through your adoption in this world. You're not who you are, even as your mom and dad tells you who you are, right? You are that way, but you're not really. What well, then that means it's all my mom's fault, or I'm blessed because of my mom and dad. I'm actually cursed because of my mom and dad. My father is bald. My mother had th thin hair, and my father's sick. So, guess what he gave me? All his sickness. And guess what I gave my little son? My oldest, actually. Almost the same diseases that I have, but came out earlier now. Mine came out late, but his disease is not too severe. But he has also immune def uh, deficiency. His disease came out so fast. I was like, wow. And my wife, every night, we have to apply medication on my first one. It's not that bad, but it's it's painful. He screams a lot. Ah! It's like, quiet, you should get used to it. Don't strain, <laughs> right? But it's really bothersome. So you guys have some sickness, backache. Oh, I can't breathe very well because of the micro dust. Don't worry, that's not who you are. The answer now is this. Where are your spiritual state at? Because Deeply, if we're not physical, mental, it's not about you know finances and our talent, then we must be spiritual then. Our identity is tied to spiritual. Right? Deeper than our thinking, what's imprinted in us, what's rooted in us in nature, deeper, deeper inside of us, all humanity is who? This is the essence now. Because you go to any country, even the atheists, most of the atheists at the deathbed. God, where are you? Most of the atheists, they don't believe God, they'll cry out to God or cry out to something. But think about it. Why in the world is only the animals right, really kind of just enjoying life and not us? Because the entire world right now, animals are not the problem, sharks are not the problem, mosquitoes are not the problem. Why in the world is the world getting worse? It's because of us, mankind. And what's the problem? 
is spiritual. Because why? All the world has religions and there's no answers to the religions. Religions are good. They're nice. Religion is so nice and so good, right? Um, one of you, actually, most of you, will, if you meet me, I'll show you this, but there's a movement called WCC, you know, ecumenism. That means the Pope and Muslims and good leaders all over the world, they're bringing all the religions together. And they can, but they can't. You know why? The only reason why they can't come together is because this. We all do good, right? And they say this, we can all come together because we have that in mind. We're all good. So, Buddhists don't even believe God, but they can come together. Pope, he believes God, right, he says. Muslims believe in, you know, Allah. But then, Buddhists don't believe God. How can they come together? They can. How? Because all religion does good. And the golden rule stands. You know, don't do bad for me, okay? I won't do bad for you, right? I'll do good for you, you do good for me. That's pretty much the golden rule, right? Everybody, so that's the commonality. But none of the real important doctrines, they don't match. But that's how they come together. It's very humanistic. Then, think about it. What's going to happen to their spiritual state? Because eventually, the smart people, they're going to say, this doesn't make sense. Right? It does mean love. Yeah, love conquers all. But that love doesn't go very far because why? That love is where and what center? Not in a higher being. They say it's a higher being, but it's not. It's the love of man. It's man-centered love. And if it's centered that way, uh, we're not doing good at all. Because if we, everybody says, you know, love each other, love everyone. Why is there so many wars? Even Muslims are supposed to love each other, you know that? They're not loving each other. They're fighting with each other too. Christians, they're fighting with each other. You guys know that, right? What happened to even, even non-believers are fighting with each other? But then love is the answer. Love is the key. Love, love, love. Right? There's so many songs about it. We are the world. We are the people. Right? Let's just hold hands and love each other. Oh, someone's hungry. Let's feed them. Yeah, but that doesn't solve the problem. Then what's the problem? Think about it. Because you need to be smart enough so that you can ask, God, what's the real problem? Who am I? What are people? What is to be a human? Then you realize that we cannot receive any true hope and we're just doomed. Do you know, we make movies like Terminator and you know, everybody's kind of scared of playing with AIs now, but AI is it's kind of possible. It's not really possible. You won't have like a artificial intelligence that would like, you know, totally like become human. You won't do that. Someone is right now, Elon Musk is trying to get, he implant a chip on it, even himself to get all his memory loaded up, right? Because our chips are pretty, you know, get all the gigas and so forth. But guess what? That will may happen, but not really. I don't think so. You can't play around with that much. But we do have semi-artificial intelligence where we can, they can, the computers can predict ahead and can decide. Oh, you got sick. You have this disease. You got this mental problem. It can decide that. It can scan you. You know, if you ever seen Star Trek, you know, scanner. Oh, you got a broken tooth there, or you got something wrong. We are going to develop that technology because it's already there. We even have. It's pretty. It's not that hard. We have smart pills too, where you send, you eat it, and then we have cameras that are smaller than pills now to show you where's wrong, what's wrong with your digestive system. And they have their own light too. So it's kind of cool. So all this development, but yet the world is not getting better. The question is why? And the answer is this. Only God's word tells the answer. Oh, we got to get rid of all the bad people. Guess what? Then we have to get rid of everyone. Because that means you had a bad thought today, you're a bad person. You did something very hiddenly, quiet, you downloaded illegally, that's still bad, right? So law, law is law. You know, America's going crazy. I don't know if the news is true, but this policeman gave this, I guess, I don't know if he was homeless, but this guy was eating pizza in the bus stop, he gave him a ticket. And the ticket is worth more than the pizza. 
the whole pan. <laughs> I was like, why can't you get a pizza in the bus stop? Because it's illegal, I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> I was like, okay, then, wow, I don't want to go back to America, it's scary, I can't eat pizza in the bus stop. But that's how we're living. Then, the most important thing you, know, you need to know is how were we created? Because if we know that we're spiritual, and if you just believe God's word a little bit, you got to go back to the original. And what is the original? God said this, God created us, how? After his own image. Uh, one of the things about faith, you got to believe that we're spiritual. And there's evidence enough. But faith is this. Faith comes by God. It's God's grace. It's by grace through faith that we accept Christ. But let me read Hebrews 11, uh, 1 to 3. You understand this. Because you think, oh, this, then I can't believe. But faith, Hebrews 11, 1 to 3 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. That means it's the truth. Right? You're so sure what you hope for. Why? It won't shake. It's the truth. But it's, you can't see this physically. And it says this, the conviction of things not seen. That means, how can you be convicted? Conviction means also, you're, you confirm it so much that it has evidences. That means it's the truth and has evidences of things not seen. And look what it says, for by it, faith. It is faith. The people of old received their con commendation. That means, they're commended. Oh, you did right because you believed. Then, look what it says in verse 3. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the Word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So you know what that means? Everything was created from spirit. Right? From the invisible. Right now, some of you are suffering because the dust is really bad. Can you collect the dust? I guess a Chinese person did that with vacuum and he made a brick. He collected dust for a day or a week? I think it was a week. And he made a brick out of it. But it was an entire week of vacuuming the air of China. But it's not that bad here in Korea. But it's coming. From China, it's coming to Korea. And we get affected, but we can't see it. Right? We just have to believe. Right now, in my phone it says, air quality, bad. <laughs> it's like, you just got to believe it. So people that believe it, what do they do? Put on the mask. Right? But if you don't put on the mask, you know what happened? <coughs> why am I coughing? You have to ask, why am I coughing? But if I believe it, oh, I think I'm going to believe what they say. And put on the mask. And the mask, it filters. It works then, right? Why do you work? Why do you study? Because you have faith. Because you think it's the truth. You think it has evidence that once you graduate, you're going to become a good professor, a business person. You know, you're going to be a pastor. You're going to be whatever, right? Teacher. That's why it has evidences too. But guess what? What does God say? What's better and what's truth is what? It's invisible spiritual. Then, what are you going to do? Find out that God's word has all power to create and recreate you and recreate every circumstances in your life. Right? What can change your country, your situation? is the power of the word of God. He created the word, world in, through his word. But where is his word centered on? John 1 says, the word is God. And John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh. And why do we need this Word that is flesh? Because that Word, for those that receive and believe in His name, He gave the authority, the right to become children of God. That Word is who? Jesus Christ. And you restore the image of God. Then that means we lost the image, image of God. But look, before we fell, this is what happened, okay? I'm trying to teach a lot of people, but then one of the questions that I ask nowadays is this. Did God allow humans to have free will? Yes, but we kind of don't anymore. We're stuck already. We're dead spiritually. Then, did humans remain the way they were created? 
like you know with God being with them and you know Genesis 1 27 28 that means God's image with us and we can conquer and rule over the world guess what the answer is left to the freedom of their own wills our first parents Adam and Eve were tempted by who Satan right through the serpent and they disobeyed God's command by eating the forbidden fruit and so fell from their original innocence the original state they're not there anymore that's why what happened to all human race because of the first disobedience since the covenant that was made with Adam as a general representative of all humanity not only for himself but also for his natural descendants the whole human race sinned in him that means everybody sinned because of Adam that means you ever seen the snowball you know roadrunner and you know the you know, the coyote the coyote always stays on top of the mountain and it starts with a little snowball and drops it that's Adam and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's unstoppable now everybody is in sin everybody is born in sin that's why it says this the whole human race sinned in him and fell with him in that first disobedience and some of you will say that's not fair i wasn't there then we shouldn't be here we shouldn't be alive right so i cannot say anything else right because i'm not god but did god leave us this way so look at this so what happened to the human race because you already know this the humans fell into the condition of sin that means everybody is not doing bad things they're in the condition of sin and sin in this original meaning means this you missed the mark you're separated from God that's what it means everybody now lives separated from God and so goodness is gone God's glory is gone Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory right no one's right no one's righteous and by the way all the good people in the world all the nice people all the kind people they're not that kind they get stressed they get crazy they blow up they get cancer the fastest they're not that nice okay trust me I know I used to be one of them then everyone is in the condition of sin and guess what that brings misery you are suffering because of that that's why what is sin is an easy definition sure it's missing the mark but it means this we didn't conform to who we're supposed to be is not conforming to or disobeying the law of God to direct our lives right why because we can reason and so hey we don't need God we can be God ourselves isn't that our problem right now today tomorrow the next day okay pastor Dave gave a good message uh, it doesn't fit me I'm not gonna live this way tomorrow you're gonna face a problem and then you're gonna blame God but God was not with you. God's word is not with you. How can, and you guys say, oh, I tried evangelism. It doesn't work. Trust me, you didn't do evangelism with God. You didn't do missions with God. You didn't accept God through Christ. You just said, you know, oh, because I was born Christian. You can't do that. You know why? Because I know history. We did that and got worse and worse. You have to meet God through God's way. And God wants you to meet him through his way. And that's why. Understand how bad original sin is. Why? What is sinful about the fallen condition of humans? What's so bad about Genesis 3? Original sin. Let me read this for you so that you can know how bad it is. The sinfulness of that fallen condition is twofold. First, what is com commonly called original sin, there is the guilt of Adam's first sin with his lack of original righteousness and the corruption of his nature that means we're all corrupted by which humans are completely now this is completely there's no hope for us completely indisposed incapacitated opposed to everything that is spiritually good as well as being completely and continually inclined to everything evil that means there's nothing good in us there's no hope for us that's why very carefully understand original sin is really bad 
And the second point about original sin is this. Because of original sin, all the specific acts of disobedience just comes out. <laughs> Why are we so bad? Why are we suffering? Because of original sin. That's what it means. That's all it means. Why is your country, why is your family feels like it's cursed? Because of original sin. But then, oh God, oh, I blame you God. Why? It was our first parents that did it. And we were just born that way. That's why one of the things that you need is this. Do you know what you need? You just need to die and just get punished and just deserve the wrath of God. But even though it sounds terrible, the wrath of God, right? It sounds really scary and bad, right? Hell, right? It sounds really bad, but that is really bad. However, it's not about God's wrath. He doesn't like to be wrathful. It's not like, you know, God is always angry. God is holy. That's why there's a wrath. There's a curse. Wrath is curse for condemnation. Because, you know, we don't need you, God. Psh, like this. Um, you ever you ever work for a boss, which is super high position, and as soon as you want to quit that job, you know what you do? You kick him, and then you spill coffee on him or something, or you do something bad, right? And then I quit, right? And then he sp spreads all the you know, news, uh, the factual news. You know, this kind of worker, what he did, even though he was a good guy, suddenly he just didn't like the job, or I guess he didn't like me, but then he just real factor to every company that he has a specialty, and then this is what happened, right? And then, I don't know if you ha should hire him, because that might happen to you. So he, he cannot be hired anywhere else, right? And then, but this guy, this um, leader, supervisor, you know, he, he, he needs that kind of person. So, it says, um, boss, um, can I get my job back? But you just betrayed me, you spilled coffee on me, you know. What, what should he do then? Because he got burned, he got second degree burn, he has to pay for his medical bills too, right? And it's just, he didn't like his job, because he made it one, you know, kind of crazy thought, you know, I hate, I want to be boss. I hate him, right? What does he deserve from that boss? You ever thought of that? God created you. Ah, I don't want it you, God. I want to be God. <laughs> what do you deserve? And he said, you're going to die. Don't eat of this. What do you deserve? You deserve that death then. And that's the wrath. And that's the justice that we deserve. I know it sounds very theological right now, and I'm trying to teach you all, all at once, but some of you may not understand this. But guess what? God doesn't stay that way. God gives you His way. And His way covers everything. We disobeyed and died. He sends someone to obey to fulfill everything that's lacking for us. He does the work for us. How? Through Christ Jesus. And that's why He's the mediator. You know, Chinese is wonderful. Because Chinese is one of the oldest languages. You know, and Chinese language itself, although now it's changed, but it's all characters, it's, it's drawings. I don't know if you know that Chinese character is drawings. So I you know I took art. So king is heaven and earth, and there's a vertical line. And then where is the king? He's in the middle. He's the mediator between heaven and earth. And it's so spiritual. Guess what? Jesus is the true king. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's a savior of saviors. Why? Because he does the work of Christ, the anointed one. That means he's a mediator between you and God, the true prophet. He's a mediator because why? You need to get rid of your sin, curses, disasters. He is the high priest, but he is the Lamb of God. He is also, oh, there's an enemy. I need a king to protect me. He is the true king that stands on behalf that fights for me. He's the true king that defeats Satan. Then, think about it. This mediator gave you everything and he said this, it's finished. And Acts 1, 1 said this, what he began to do, right? In my former book, Theophilus, what Jesus began to do, he is continuing now. 
and his kingdom emphasizes everything. Why? The works keep taking place through his kingdom. So who's king in his kingdom? Jesus is king. So get rid of all your disbelief. Get rid of all your wrong thinking. Oh, America, oh, Korea, North Korea. Kingdom of God is stronger. One angel can wipe out an entire army. Remember that. God is God because He is almighty, all-knowing. He's all-present. And He's all in love with you. Then, look at the church bulletin. It says this. So where is your identity, our start, our goal, our end, our forever? Is this, Galatians 20. I have been crucified in Christ. That means what happened to you is this. All your problems, your Genesis 3, all your 12 problems has been crucified in Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives inside of me. Why? Because He loves me. He's going to be with me. He's never going to leave you alone. Christ is with you. Not just when you accept Christ, but forever. It's the greatest adoption ever. You're now a daughter and son of God. That will never change. By the way, you know why it says children of God and sons of God? Do you know why it says this? Because there's no such thing as gender. He doesn't choose specialties. You know, I like my daughter better. You know, like fathers, I like my daughter better than my son. There is no favoritism in the kingdom of God. Oh, but I'm a girl. I won't be used greatly like a guy. No. Nothing like that. You are the children of God. You have that right once you believe and receive them. Then, guess what happens? All your life, all you have to do is enjoy and experience that cross. The cross gives me all hope, all life. Takes away my curse, takes away my hell, takes away hell itself, right? Diseases, curses, disasters. Satan's power is taken away at the cross. At the cross, when he said it's finished, do you have a problem? You should take it to the cross because it's finished. Oh, I'm worried. Oh, I said something wrong. I made a mistake. At the cross, it's finished. That's your repentance. That's your U-turn. Where can you meet God? At the cross. Where can you find life? At the cross. Where can you find freedom? At the cross. Where is all your answers, happiness? At the cross of Jesus Christ. Then, what must you experience? The cross of Calvary. What must you also experience because He's resurrected? The Mount of Olives. His kingdom is your kingdom. When you play soccer, when you teach, when you do anything, when you play games, when you watch drama, whatever you do, the kingdom of God. And who is with you, guiding you, working? The Holy Spirit. Why? You're going to see and do and go where others cannot go. To do what? To save the world. Right? Can you save your company? No problem. Even if it's a huge company like Coca-Cola or whatever. Or a huge army base, the most important army base in the world, Osan. No problem. You can save it. What about huge islands like Philippines? Too many islands, but not all of them they live, so don't worry. Philippines is huge. You can save it. But not just Philippines, the entire world. What about India is even a mess. It's like India is connected to Nepal, and Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. You can save it all. Right? If you're from Hawaii, you save not just the Pacific, you have to save the world. Why? Because you're mixed. If you're mixed, you're even better. If you're from Europe, even better. From Canada, even better. Right? Wherever you're from, no problem. Why? Because you know that according to Scripture, from Old Testament to New Testament to now, He died and resurrected. 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. And you can experience the filling of the Holy Spirit now. Why? Because God called you to do what? To shine the light to all people. You are His chosen instrument. Right? To share the Gospel. And when do you enjoy this? Now. Ephesians 6, 16. When are you going to pray? Always. Inside the Holy Spirit. And what happens? Because you have the blessing of Genesis 3.15, Exodus 3.18, Isaiah 7.14. Then you do know God. God is with you. John 14.6. You 
and all your problems are solved. Mark 10, 45. Who's serving you? The king is serving you. He's a ransom for you, and he's your king. And he gave you the spirit of life, so you're alive. Romans 8, 2. And you got the power to destroy the work of the devil, because what? Jesus came to do that work. Then, can you hear God's voice? Of course. That's why Samuel, since he heard God's voice, none of his words fell to the ground. That means all his answers were, really, all his prayers were answered, right? His answers were tied to God's voice. And 1 Peter 1, 9, that means what's inside of us is faith, and faith is for what? Salvation. And when we believe, when we believe about other people, they get saved too. 1 Peter 1, 9 says that. The goal of our faith is salvation. Same thing, we believe that they're going to be saved, then God has to work and save those people too. Then, what? are we supposed to do is through who we are you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation right why because to declare his wonderful life first peter tonight that's who you are that's your calling that's where god made you to be that's why isaiah 60 1 2 since you know who you are and, you're, and you can hear god's voice he tells you arise and shine you know america is really wonderful because you know how they used to wake up kids Rise and shine, rise and shine. But you know where they got that from? Isaiah 60, 1 to, 4, 1 to 2. Why? The glory of the Lord is upon you. Then, your calling is this. God says, who am I going to send? Oh, that's why God put me here. With my friends, with my co-workers. Even though they're bad, God placed me here. This is my calling. Here am I, send me. If you just say that to God, God will use you. That's why God always will it says in isaiah um, acts 20 verse 24 but i do not count my life of any value nor as precious to myself if i only i may finish my course and the ministry i receive from the lord jesus to testify the gospel the grace of god i am who i am by the grace of god and i'm going to testify that grace of who i am and allow others to become who they truly are too right because they're all lying and one of you said this i have a friend he said, I have a friend, she's really pretty, she's from Hawaii, she's Korean, and she joined a girl group, right? And then she didn't like that. It was a very famous girl group here in Korea, K-pop, but she was really disappointed. She's pretty talented, I heard. And she's back in Hawaii selling, you know, because she's pretty, so she's selling nice clothes. But being a girl group, that's not who you are. It's really hard. It's, you have to fake it all the time, you have to lie. How do I know? Because I have friends and co-workers that minister to it. really talented celebrities too it's not easy what about people that have all the money they're faking it too that's why know who you are then galatians 1 15 to 16 but when he who has set me apart before i was born wow god set you apart and who called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that i might preach him among the gentiles I did not immediately consult with anyone. That means you don't need anyone to recognize you. You need to what? Just follow God's leading. Right? God called you. He will lead you. Then, guess what? Romans 1, 1 to 6, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Where do you belong? In Christ Jesus. Then, what is your commission? Where is your mission at? It's easy. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That was in prison. So I can't do that. I'm not like you, Pastor Dave. Trust me, I'm an introvert. You guys don't believe that I'm an introvert? I don't like meeting people, all right? You guys should understand if God can use anybody, right? Pastor you, he shouldn't be able to do organization. If you don't know his story, I'll tell you later. But I don't like sharing his story because he's going to hit me. <laughs> but he won't hit me anyway. He'll hit me with prayer. So don't hit me with prayer. <laughs> but Pastor you should not be a world evangelist. It's all by God's grace, right? Some of you think that, oh, being short is a curse. Trust me, in our movement, being short is a blessing. Being tall is a curse. <laughs> so be blessed. <laughs> then think about it. I can do all things. And 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 2 is this. Be strong in God's grace and relay that to reliable men. That will re relate to others. That's it. And also, 2 Timothy uh, uh, four, one to two, and five. It also says that be ready always to preach the gospel. It's not just for the evangelists and pastors, but for you too. Then, 
Let me read Isaiah 61 to 3 again fully. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thickness, thick darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nation, a nation shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. That means everybody's going to come to you. So they look at problems, trust me, they have problems. That's why they come to you. They look at problems, but you have the answer to solve all problems. Right? Because you have the light. And darkness will go away. Who's the darkness? Satan. Right? So what are you afraid of? Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Stop disbelieving. Realize who you are. Amen? May you truly enjoy the blessing of your identity. May you realize how bad the sin is and how good the Savior Lord is, Christ Jesus, inside of your life. Amen? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for allowing us to know this gospel. May we truly enter inside of only Christ. And may we be filled with your Holy Spirit. And may your kingdom come in every field that we're in. Thank you so much that we can realize who we are by your grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.